All right, welcome to the worksheet on finding um, x-intercepts. So it says find the x-intercepts for each function by, uh, by factoring the functions and setting each factor equal to zero, which is called the zero product property. These first um, problems here have to do with the difference of two perfect squares. I'm going to make a sequence of numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 39, 64, 81, 100, and dot, dot, dot. This could go on forever. So basically, I've just listed the perfect squares. These are all called perfect squares. Oops, perfect squares. So that's 10 times 10, 9 times 9, 8 times 8, 7 times 7, 6 times 6, 5 times 5, 4 times 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. So by difference we mean um, subtraction. So x squared is a perfect square because it's x times x and 9 of course is a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. So we factor this by doing x and x and then we're trying to set it equal to 0 and then plus 3 and minus 3. So the difference of two perfect squares always factors into the same thing times the same thing, but one it has to be plus, one has to be minus. So the question is, why does one have to be plus? One is, why does one have to be minus? So I'm bringing in a pencil. I do the Officer Bell half donut trick or Officer Barnett, right? There's the donut. So if I multiply these two together, I get negative 3x. If I multiply these two together, I get 3x. If you put 3x and negative 3x together, you get no x. And notice there's no x term in the middle of this. So that's how these always factor. So then, I, once I get this part, bring it back in the pin, and I make a t. I go 0 product proper t. So then I subtract the 3 over, I get x is negative 3. So add the 3 over, x is 3. So this has x-intercepts of 3 and negative 3. Uh, let's look at number 5. Number 5 would be two sets of parentheses, x and x. 64 is the eighth one. So 64 is 8 times 8. So one of them is plus 8. The other one is minus 8. And that's all we do. Once you set it equal to zero, then we do zero product property. We set each factor equal to zero. We subtract the eight over. We add the eight over. So we get negative eight and eight. The ones on the bottom are kind of like what we did the other day when we did the factoring worksheet, but I added on a number in front besides just x squared. It's now some number x squared. So two x squared, 3x squared, 4x squared, anything like that. So let's do number 8 together. Because we have this x squared here, a 3 x 3 in the beginning, we have to account for that. So when I make my two and the other one has to be x. So 3x times x makes 3x squared. The big shift here is the fact that you have to pay attention to how you put these numbers. You have to really check to make sure that it makes the original. So 8 times 1 is 8 and 1, but also 4 and 2. And this one, just for speed purposes, it's going to be 4 and 2. The problem is it makes a difference how I put the 4 and how I put the 2. So let's say I don't know. I write 2 here and I write 4 there. Is this going to make 10 in the middle? So I bring out the, the pen here, pencil, and you get 2x, and then this would make 12x. Does 2x and 12x make 10 in the middle? If you add them, it's 14. If you subtract them, it's 10, which is good. The problem is, because this is positive and this positive, I can't have any subtraction here at all. So that means that I have this wrong. Even though it seems kind of right, it's really wrong. So the, the 2 and the 4 are in the wrong location. I need to switch them. So I bring in my handy-dandy whiteout and I get rid of the 2 and I get rid of the 4. Isn't that magical how that goes? They're just gone. So I'm going to put the 4 here and the 2 here. So when I when I look at this, this times this is 4x and this times this is 6x. So let me, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to write this again. 4x, put these together, 
6x. Well, doesn't 4x and 6x make 10x in the middle with, when everything's positive? Sure it does. 4 and 6 is 10. So I'm going to get rid of this out of here. I don't need that because i got to do zero product proper. T. Make a T. So boop and doop and 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Subtract the 2 over. x is equal to negative 2. Subtract 4 over. 3x is negative 4. Divide by 3. And we get x is negative 4 thirds. So if you were doing the thing where you had to draw these out, we know that it's positive and even, so it's up and up on each side, and it crosses at negative 4 thirds and 2, and it crosses at positive 8, because the 8 there, when it's in standard form, is where it crosses there. So we go e, e, negative 2, 1, 2, put a dot, negative 4 thirds would be kind of there, and then it crosses over here at 0, 8, because I know that's the y-intercept. So it comes down, and it goes up, and it goes through the 0, 8. So that's what it would look like, essentially, when I graphed it. Okay, but those are the two roots. Those are the zeros of the function. Those are the x-intercepts. And then we would go through 0, 8 as well, the y-intercept. Okay, on the back side, I'd like to go through number 12 with you. Um, this one's 5, and this one has a negative in it. So since it has a negative in it, we're going to have to have some negatives. See, this one here was kind of easy because it was all positive, so that had to be all positive. So let's do this one here. So I'm going to say 5x and x. 5x times x is 5x squared. And then um, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 times 2, 6 and 1, 1 and 6, multiply to make 6. For speed purposes, I'm going to tell you it's 3 and 2. We're going to put the 3 here. That 3 would be multiplied by the 5 to make 15. So make 15. The 2 is multiplied by the x to make 2x. So we got minus and we got minus like that. All right. So does that work? Let's check it out. This and this is minus 2x. This and this is minus 3x. Minus 3, minus 15, my bad. Minus 2 and minus 15 make negative 17 in the middle. Now, had I, if I had it in a different order or whatever, it wouldn't make the 17 in the middle. If the signs were wrong, it wouldn't make the 17 in the middle. There's only one unique answer to factoring. So I can get rid of this now. As I checked it, made sure it worked. Okay, and then I can just do zero product proper t. 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. x minus 3 is equal to 0. Add the 3 over. x is equal to 3. So this crosses at 3. 3. Add 2. X is, 5x is equal to 2. Divide by 5. And we get x is 2 fifths. All right, now if we were doing the graph again, right, then it would be... You know, the 5 in the front makes it rise up 5 times as fast compared to normal. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 is there. 2 fifths is about there. And then it crosses at 6, 0, 6. It's up here. So it comes down, way down, it goes back up, etc. Like that. That's what it looked like. So it crosses at 3, it crosses at 2 fifths, and it crosses the y axis at 0, 6. And I know that because that's in standard form versus factored form. So everything should match up with all of this. Now, you don't have to draw the, draw the graph with each one of them, but if it helps you to understand it, by all means, draw the little graph here to show what's going on here. Those are the places where it crosses. Those are the answers. There's the parabola. And I, th I think that uh, can be a very useful exercise. All right? Peace out. You can do it.